Hello, everyone, and welcome to our workshop today on Google Analytics 4. Um, thank you for bearing with us. We had a little bit of technical difficulty, so we're starting a minute late, <laughs> um, but we're glad you're all here. Um, with me today is Emily Bant and Andrea Yank. Um, so as you all are aware, we're talking about Google Analytics 4 for manufacturers, um, which encompasses many of our clients. Um, but really, I think the points that Emily and Andrea will cover today um, really apply to any B2B company. So if you're not a manufacturer, you're still welcome to be here and we're happy that you're here. Um, so to just set this topic up a little bit, um, I'll say that there's been a lot of talk and a lot of anxiety around Google Analytics 4 or GA4, as we'll probably be referring to it throughout the presentation. Um, and it's a pretty significant departure from what you're probably used to, which is universal analytics. Um, so I know some of us maybe have been procrastinating or kind of putting off making this transition, um, or you have it set up, but you're just struggling to set up tracking or find the reporting that you need. So we really hope that in this workshop, you will feel more confident using Google Analytics 4 and have a little bit more knowledge of where to find what. Um, so with that, I will go ahead and introduce our speakers if we want to pull up the... All right. In the meantime, I will introduce myself. <laughs> um, so I'm Ann Cotter. I'm the Director of Sales and Marketing here at Top Floor. And I will be really just fielding questions and learning alongside the audience from Emily, Emily and Andrea. Um, so with that said, you are welcome to use the chat button in the lower right. So as you have questions, feel free to ask them. I'll probably save most of them for the end. But if there's anything that feels really timely to a specific point being made or a specific slide, I'll jump in and, and ask Emily and Andrea those questions. Um, but em Andrea and Emily are the real leaders of this workshop, and they'll be kind of walking through what GA4 is. Um, they'll go kind of behind the scenes and show you where to find different reports, um, different key places uh, as far as setup goes. Um, so they'll really be leading everything. And both of them are team leads over here at Top Floor and have a wealth of knowledge when it comes to analytics, SEO, PPC, um, and digital marketing strategy overall. All right. So moving on to our agenda for the day or for the hour, I should say. Um, so Emily and Andrea will cover just overall what you need to know about GA4, some specific or important deadlines if you aren't aware of them already. Um, they'll talk a little bit about the differences between GA4 and universal analytics, especially how data is collected um, and how reporting may look a little bit different. Uh, they'll talk a little bit about GA4 events setup. I know that was a big question that we had come in before the workshop. Um, and we'll talk about the evolution of GA4. So what we knew about GA4 a year ago is very different from what we know now. New reports are coming out. So we'll talk a little bit about um, what new knowledge we've gained. Um, and then finally, most importantly, we'll do a GA4 walkthrough. So this will be more of a behind the scenes, actually showing you inside of GA4, um, kind of looking at various reports and all of that. Um, we'll save 10 to 15 minutes towards the end for questions. So like I said, feel free to use the chat. And yeah, thank you all for being here. I will stop talking and pass things over to Andrea and Emily. Perfect. And yeah, if you didn't uh, put in the chat yet, let us know if you have GA4 set up yet or not. If you're kind of the I'm here to figure out what I need to start with, or you're just here to learn, you already have it set up. So, um, all right. So the first thing we're gonna jump into is why is GA4 here? Why, why did Google have to update a platform that we all know so well? And um, one, I think, big thing is just technology is different. We are in a very different spot now than we were years ago with universal analytics, and Google needs to adapt to those capabilities. So of course, the privacy first tracking is a huge, huge importance for Google Analytics 4 to keep um, customers' privacies um, at a top priority. Um, one thing that you'll notice because of that in GA4, which again, we'll dive all into all this, um, but your reporting metrics are actually pretty delayed in GA4. So a visit today may not show up in analytics until tomorrow. And again, that's all that privacy focused um, efforts. And you can now, not a, I would say not a lot of our manufacturers have an app, but you can track 
your website and app um, performance all within the one platform. So just evolution of technology in general, they had to adapt and create a new platform and definitely focus on privacy. Um, the other item, just to, this is a small nuance, but something to pay attention to is in Universal Analytics, you had your account, your property, and then your view. In your view, a lot of marketers used to um, test out filters to just kind of have an aggregation of all their data, and maybe they looked at a different view for their master view. Um, those view abilities are no longer. If you want some sort of test <laughs> platform to review data in, you have to set up an entirely new account. Kind of stinks. Um, but those are kind of the first <laughs> two items. Andrea, you're like already cringing and we just started. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. All right. That part's annoying, but. Yeah. All right. And then a couple of other need to know items are some dates to keep in mind. So the first one is July 1st of this year. Universal Analytics will stop collecting data. So that means come July 1st, you're, you're not going to get any new data into Universal Analytics. But if you have GA4 set up, then your data will start collecting in GA4. Now, um, that's a little bit scary to some people if you haven't started yet. But the good thing is that you do have until July 1st of 2024 to look into Universal Analytics. If you're looking to maybe do some comparisons, which we'll kind of go into a little bit, or just to get any year over year data that you need. Um, it may not all be apples to apples because of how the data is collected, but you do have that kind of one year buffer to still have access to that data. Um, you may consider exporting that data before July of 2024 if there's reports you're always looking at and you know that you're gonna want the historical data beyond next year. Um, I would recommend exporting those reports um, if you're going to use it. Yeah, and let me just clarify that point again, because I think um, when I've mentioned it to people in the past, they've gotten a little bit confused on that. But um, so July 1st of this year is when Universal Analytics stops collecting new data. You're not going to get any more. You'll still have your whatever historical data you have in there. July 1st of next year is it'll you can't even view all your data mm -hmm. but in that time you can still view as much data as you have right now in there mm -hmm. um, in the universal analytics and during that time you can export and do whatever it's going to be you can't edit anything so what i think that means is like you can't edit add any more filters mm -hmm. or segments or anything that you would um, set up in there you can't add new conversion goals obviously you're not going to be tracking anything in there so it doesn't really matter um, it's a view only access in that year time frame, but um, you still have access to all your data mm -hmm. just only until July 1st of 2024. Yeah. And that has changed, it, I think, a couple of times too, where Google Analytics at first said, you'll yeah, have six yeah. months. Uh, actually, we'll give you a year. <laughs> then, yeah. yeah, they're like, oh, wait, maybe a year is better. <laughs> so you have a year to download all of your data. <laughs> yes. And then yeah. it's goodbye. Get it. <laughs> it's goodbye. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> Um, speaking of downloading data, um, the data in Universal Analytics will not always match apples to apples to GA4, which Andrea will dive into more. But if you're looking at like, why aren't my numbers exactly matching up? It's because the data is collected differently um, for a number of different reasons. But one example is bounce rate is totally different now, which Andrea will get into. Um, the definition of a user is different now. So your user numbers are not going to match. So although you can have that historical data, it's not going to be an exact comparison in many instances. So keep that in mind too. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, and that's exactly what I'm going to talk about here. So um, in universal analytics, historically, it's been hit based. Um, so everything like a page view, an event, that's all hits that are collected into a, a single session, and then that's how Universal Analytics collects all that data. In GA4, everything is event-based. So whatever you knew about events in Universal Analytics, forget it. That's only one piece of the many things that are actually event-based in GA4. So um, GA4 page views are event-based. Um, session starts are event-based. Like those are all things that um, are just automatically collected. 
Um, and then of course, there's still events that you can custom set up and then mark those as conversions and all your conversions are hit based as well. Before you had to, uh, you, could, you had the option to set up conversions within the platform as destination goals and whatnot, that's all gone. Um, there's a different way to set that up and we'll touch on that lightly, but so sessions between Universal Analytics and GA4 are different. Um, they're tracking a little bit differently. Um, so in GA4, they do not restart at midnight. So in Universal Analytics, if you had a session that went through the midnight hour, it would restart, it would start a new session ID. So your sessions could be a little bit inflated, especially if you have a large amount of traffic and if it's international or even across, you know, uh, time zones, um, you could have a little more sessions in Universal Analytics than you would see in GA4 because it doesn't restart at midnight. Um, and then in GA4, it, it starts with an event trigger and that's not necessarily a page view. So um, your sessions start um, in GA4 could happen if like, let's say you're, you go to a website and you're on a page and you navigate away from that page for 30 minutes and your session, um, your session actually expires. Then you come back to that page that you still have open and then you scroll. That's, that's, um, a new session. Whereas in Universal Analytics, in that same scenario, you came back to that page after 30 minutes and that session has expired. If you scroll and then leave, it doesn't count as a new session. Like that, your first session was the only thing that counted because everything was hit based and hit based or and Universal Analytics was looking for that new page view. You're still on the page. It didn't count your scroll. It's not a new session. So again, um, between those two things, your numbers are not going to match up between your Russell Analytics and GA4. It almost seems like more of an accurate tracking, right? Like if I yeah. leave a page mm -hmm. for over 30 minutes and I come back later, my brain's in a new place. Yeah. Like this is a new visit in my mind. Sure. Yeah. And, and you could be, you know, um, looking at content on that page that is important. Like we would want to know mm -hmm. that. So all that's being tracked in GA4, whereas it wouldn't in Universal Analytics. Right. So. Yeah, I think I think it's better. Mm -hmm. One point, um, a little frustrating that they just yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One point. One. I think um, it's still a little frustrating that like they just changed the definitions, but I understand it. Yeah. I kind of understand it. Um, users, um, same type of thing. In GA4, it's active users um, is default for any any report where you say you see users being used. It's active users. Just remember that it's not total users. So those users that came to the site and then bounced as in the old terminology of bounce um, would not be an active user. They have to have an engagement event happen. Mm -hmm. So like um, a scroll, so, right? Like an active user means yes. they scroll, they're on the page for a certain, um, certain amount of time. Yep. Yeah, so universal analytics would count um, all users, total users. In GA4, it only wants to give you the active users. It was actually did something on your mm -hmm. site when they were there. Um, there is, though, a metric within GA4 that is total users. So you can use total users in GA4 against users in Universal Analytics. So keep that in mind. If you export your data and you want to do your, your comparisons, users is probably your best bet. Just make sure you're using total users in GA4. Um, page views is the other confusing uh, metric here. It's now an event, not a metric in GA4. Um, but the metric that you can look at is called views. And what that is, it's, it's actually page views plus screen views. So again, going back to um, what Emily was talking about where they, you can now track your website and app together, that screen views is the app. So in our world where most of our clients do not have app apps, um, screen views doesn't exist. So page views is views now. So just know that that's in all the reports. Views is page views. Okay, hot topic, bounce rate and engagement rate. <laughs> let's unpackage this a little bit. Um, so let's define engagement, uh, engage sessions and bounce sessions here a little bit and then, um, then I'll 
you can kind of understand a little bit better uh, how it's different between GA4 and, and Universal Analytics. So engaged sessions in GA4 um, are 10 or more seconds, one conversion event, or at least two page views. So any one of those conditions met is an engaged session in GA4. A bounce session in Universal Analytics was less than two page views before exit. So think about your blog, if you have a blog, your blog pages. You are sending maybe direct traffic into your blog pages. You, you know, promote it through email or social or you know, even PPC. Um, and those people consume your blog, but then they leave. Those are bounced sessions. Um, in GA4, those are not bounce sessions. Those are still engaged sessions because they've spent over 10 seconds um, and they've, they've um, scrolled, which actually creates an engagement event. Mm -hmm. Or maybe they didn't scroll if it's not longer, but still, they've probably spent over 10 seconds. Um, that's technically an engaged session. So um, originally, when GA4 came out, they were like, we're not going to do imbalance rate. We want engagement rate. We're going to look at the positive. Like, these people are really engaged with your content, um, <laughs> which was good in theory. But I think there was a lot of people who were just really upset that the bounce rate was gone because it was a metric that we all looked at. So Google was like, OK, we'll bring back bounce rate, but we're not going to define it the same. We're basically going to make it the exact opposite of engagement rate which by these definitions, you already know that it's going to be different. Mm -hmm. So these are not comparable. Yes, they brought back bounce rate, but it is completely different. So bounce rate in the GA4 is the, app, is the opposite of engagement rate. So it would actually be lower in GA4 than it will be in Universal Analytics because of, like I said, that, like that blog content or pages like that where they're consuming the content on that page and then leaving. Um, that's okay. They're still engaged with your content. They might come back later and convert, um, but that's not, that's no longer a bounce anymore. So mm -hmm. in your mm -hmm. opinion, <laughs> do you feel that this is a better <laughs> measurement of bounce rate mm -hmm. than in universal analytics? I do. I do because because of what I just said, like with the consuming the content, like I feel like that just was, a, it was a miss. Um, a lot of our clients have have blog uh, pages and we'd always be like, OK, if we exclude the blog pages, well, we don't have to do that anymore because, mm -hmm. um, yes, they're still a bounce if they spent less than 10 seconds, which is fine. Like if you come to the blog page and you didn't even read any of it, you read like the title and we're like, oops, nope, I'm gone. That's not an engaged session. And yeah, that is a bounce. So I feel like this is way more accurate. Yeah, and I we don't like have to it. exclude any pages. Mm -hmm. I like it from the perspective of right now, if a page has a high bounce rate, I'm looking at it like, okay, what should I not be doing? Where in yeah. this case, I can look at what pages have a high engagement rate and say, okay, these pages are working really, really well. How can I apply that mm -hmm. to the other areas of my website? Um, I feel like it's a better, better metric to go yeah. off of almost. Yeah, you yeah. could benchmark engagement rate alone and not even look at bounce rate and just say, okay, yeah. these pages have really high engagement rates. This one doesn't have as great of an engagement rate. Mm -hmm. Let's compare those two, maybe figure out why that is or what the difference would be. Yeah, and honestly, that's probably the stance we're going to take with our clients is just let's look at the engagement rate um, and make decisions from that rather than the bounce rate because it, it will be misleading to some of our clients to include bounce rate again and like, oh, it's 20% lower than it was last year. Well, yeah, because it's Obviously, not working yeah. the same. <laughs> right. <laughs> so. um, we did have a question come in that I think was related to the previous slide, um, but will you still be able to exclude internal users? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. There's a, there's a set you, you can exclude internal users. Um, it's a, it's part of the setup portion of um, GA4, but you, you won't have access to two different views where it shows you everybody included versus the excluded traffic. So just keep that in mind. Make sure when you exclude your internal users, it's truly your internal users. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Test it. <laughs> Okay, 
And then um, getting in the weeds a little bit, but because events are just so important with GA4, I wanted to spend a little bit of time on this. Um, there's different types of events that are tracked in GA4. Um, there's automatic uh, events that are tracked, so you don't have to do any kind of setup. It's basically like you, you add the code to your website, and usually we recommend doing that through Tag Manager. Um, and these are automatically starting to collect as soon as you do that. There's enhanced measurement events, and basically um, those just need to be turned on. They're automatic after that. You just select them within the setup platform. Um, and if we have time, I'll show you where, the, where that is. Um, and then there's custom events. So just like you're used to, if you wanna set up specific events for um, like this newsletter sign up or this contact us form, like those are your custom events. And I'm not probably gonna spend too much time on that just because everybody probably knows what that is if you've set up universal analytics. Um, so the automatically tracked events are uh, session start and first visit. So those should be pretty self-explanatory. The first visit is obviously your new users. This is the first time they've been to their website. Um, and to GA4, everyone is new at first. So keep that in mind. Um, user engagement. So again, that's any kind of engagement event tracks as a user engagement event. And then app events, if you have an app, there's a bunch of app events. I didn't include them here because they're not as relevant as these other ones. The enhanced measurement events. Um, we highly recommend that these be turned on just because they are really, really valuable to your reporting. Um, just know that there's like privacy things that you have to keep in mind if you want to be GDPR compliant um, or the California um, compliant. So uh, read through all that before you agree to any of it. Um, the page view uh, event is turned on with that scrolling. And then what's called clicks is actually outbound clicks. So um, anybody uh, navigating away from your website, if you have outbound clicks on your site. Um, viewing search results is an event that can be automatically turned on. Um, file downloads. So all the files on your, uh, on your website that can so be downloaded. <laughs> I know, I know. Yeah, so as long as you can turn it on with enhanced measurement, it, it, it's right there. So just keep that in mind before you go ahead and set up a custom. And then again, forms, same thing, saves you so much time. So anybody that starts a form and anybody that submits a form can be automatically tracked if you turn that on through the enhanced measurement. And then videos. Um, so start, start of a video, progress of a video, and completion of a video can be automatically tracked if you turn that on. And then again, custom your custom events, which is anything outside of these that you need tracked. Um, there's also, with each one of these events, there's parameters that are being automatically collected as well. So um, there's articles out there, uh, on Google has out there that um, will walk you through that. And then there's also, they have like this laundry list of events that they actually recommend. And if you click on each one of them, it'll show you exactly how to set them up in either tag manager or um, a manual tag. So it's super easy, but look for that for sure. Um, question that came in through the chat. Uh, does that work for multi-page forms? I think under the enhanced measurement. Ooh. Uh, good question. I don't know that I know that. I can't think of a... That's okay. Yeah, I can't think of any of our clients that have multi-page forms. We could dive into it and there will be a, like a follow-up email, right? Maybe you can include it in there. Yeah. 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 yeah, definitely. And then, yeah, same thing with videos too. Um, from what I understand, it's that's going to be tracking YouTube. But I'm not sure if you are hosting through, what's the other one, Vimeo? Or Vimeo, right. yeah. Mm -hmm. I think there's an extra setup piece to that. So just keep that in mind as well if you're looking for that. Mm -hmm. Good question, though. Mm -hmm. All right. So the next piece that we want to look at, so Andrea talked about a lot of the nuances of GA4, and this kind of goes back into the setup of looking at what you have in Universal Analytics to make sure you can keep that data in GA4. So looking at those events and conversions that she just went over, what are you tracking now that you wanna make sure you have access to that data in GA4? Um, a lot of it will 
kind of happen for you. But if there is any custom events that you need to um, set up or just turn on, do that right away. Um, the next one is if there are any custom channel definitions that you have running. There is, I believe, a limit of two in GA4 for these, but anything beyond your typical direct traffic, organic traffic, paid search. Um, I have a link in here for the list of default channel groups in GA4, as well as creating custom channel groups. Um, you may choose to set up a custom channel for tracking a specific campaign that you have running. Um, if you kind of want to keep an eye on that performance in an easy way. So making sure you set that up. And then your audiences and segments too. Um, so with these, audiences are used in Google Ads. So you want to make sure that you're setting those up now so that when you transfer it over to Google Ads, you have that audience built. Um, Andrea, correct me if I'm wrong, that's that setup is like setting up a new audience in GA4. Yeah. You don't have that retroactive data. Yeah, it only starts collecting when you set it up. So if you set it up mm -hmm. now, by you know July, you might have a month and a half of data or whatever, a month and a half of your audiences in there, mm -hmm. which might be good enough, but usually we're running 90 days. So <laughs> you wanna do that yeah. right now. <laughs> Yeah, set it, set up your audiences, especially if you're using remarketing campaigns, that kind of thing. Set those up now so you can transfer those into Google Ads and have a good mm -hmm. subset. And then for segments, a um, little bit different um, in GA4, um, you, they are primarily used in explorations. Um, in universal analytics, anytime you wanted to look at a segment, it was just at the top of every report you could adjust where now it's just in the explorations part of GA4, which is your custom reports. So we'll dive into that when we open up GA4 too. So mm -hmm. keep an eye on what you have set up right now and transfer that over to GA4 as needed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Honestly, just grab a pen and paper and what data do you yeah. look at? Write it down and figure out where it is in GA4. Yep. Um, on the custom channel definitions, I do want to point out that GA4 actually, so Google went through their um, default channel groupings and really revamped them. Um, and then those are all the definitions of them. So I would, I would look through that because if you had to add specific, uh, specific sources to your custom channel definitions in universal analytics, that might be automatic in GA4. You might have to not modify those at all because GA, the GA ones in GA4 are, are really robust. Like they went yeah. through and really made sure that they were trying to account for as much as possible. Yeah, they definitely looked at what are people wanting to track and look at and let's just make it mm -hmm. automatic in GA4, which I can appreciate. Yeah, which I appreciate. Yeah, I really appreciate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Less tag manager finagling. Yeah. Yes. And there one more point on the custom channel definitions. If you create a custom channel definition, just make sure that when you're looking at reporting, it's going to default to the default channel groupings, not your custom one. Yeah, just a new one. But you can adjust that, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah it's not going to be that. there automatically. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sorry, Anne, did you have a question? Um, no, not anymore. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. All right. And then I believe this is the last piece that we're going to kind of talk about before we dive into GA4. So, um, and it's just the evolution of GA4. When GA4 launched, it was in a very different place than it was today. Um, they, Google is constantly adding new features, new reports, new capabilities. Between when Andrew and I created this presentation to today, we had to adjust because there was just all kinds of new things happening. So a few examples of that is the landing page report, which um, so many marketers use, was not in GA4. You had, if you wanted it, you could create it as a custom report, but it was not there by default. Thank goodness it is there now. Um, if you don't see it, you may just have to add it into your um, the left column. We'll show you how to do all this. Um, Bounce rate, we talked about that. It wasn't there at first. And then Google realized, okay, people are mad about this. Let's add it in there. <laughs> um, different, different types of tracking is always, is always being added. 
Um, there, I added a link here too um, for the, there's daily updates of things that are happening and changing. So what you see today probably won't be the same as what happens July 1st, hopefully for the better um, with new capabilities being added. So um, I have a question. If there's something that you're hoping to, to see in GA4, what is it? You can tell us in the chat and maybe it's there and we can kind of help you navigate to it. Um, one of mine, it's so minor, is annotations. Um, just as simple oh, as I had a I don't new think website that's minor, that, Emily. <laughs> right. And, no, I don't think that's world, minor. I guess I, I want to say it's, it feels too simple. Like, why is it not there? Yeah. Like, if you had a new website launch, I want to note that on the day. Or if you're updating pages, I want to note yeah. that. There are third party yeah. tools. Okay, if you need it, there's third-party tools that yeah, you can pay a subscription to. Yeah, um, but that's my like. Oh my gosh. Why? Why is this not there? Ooh. So that's frustrating. Yeah. I did not it know could, that they didn't have annotations. It yeah. could still happen. We're better. <laughs> we're <laughs> Let me tell you, Google if you're watching. <laughs> <laughs> Please add. Yeah, right. yeah. Yeah. We're oh, here my phone. Uh, annotations. <laughs> annotations. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, nothing in the chat so far, okay. um, but I do want to just add to this point that we definitely realize we're probably hitting like the tip of the iceberg with this mm -hmm. topic and yeah. knowing how much GA4 has evolved in the last year, um, you can expect probably more workshops like this on GA4. Mm -hmm. So if you're like, what do you mean? It's going to change in a few months. Um, <laughs> we have you covered. Don't we'll worry. Be back. We'll, we'll keep you updated yeah. and we'll be back with more information, but yeah. Yeah. Carry on. <laughs> Perfect. Andrew, is there anything that you're like hoping to see? I feel like everything that you've mentioned up to this point, Google has heard you and the changes have been there. <laughs> yeah. Well, you're welcome. Put it out in the universe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Um, yeah. So I, my definitely on my wish list is the annotations. It just doesn't, mm -hmm. it, it's, I still understand how it's not a thing. <laughs> yeah. Um, but no, I think. I think I've come to terms with what it is and I'm really looking to like the new stuff. So like the explore stuff and the advertising, uh, yeah. reporting, like all the new stuff. I'm like, Ooh, okay. I, I can get jazz on that, you know? So mm -hmm. trying to look to the positive. Yeah. That's just who I am. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And we you were talking to. a lot too about how GA4 is definitely built for the B2C world. Oh, <clears throat> like yes. there's custom, audiences that are just clearly more B2C driven. So hopefully more of those B2B metrics show up in here too. Yeah. Yeah. So something that we won't probably touch on here is the predictive uh, audiences. And mm -hmm. um, a lot of those are based off of purchase data. Well, a lot of our B2B clients don't have e-commerce. So, yeah. you know, and I that's remember nice. <laughs> It's like, will likely purchase in the next 30 days. Well, that decision yeah. period on the B2B side is much, much longer than 30 days. So oh, yeah. give me something yeah. else to work with. Right, right. If it was like lead-based, like we'll, you know, fill out an RFQ in the next that would be 30 helpful. days. Like that would be amazing. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. So hopefully, yes, those are being added. Yeah. Um, okay. So let's look at GA4. Cool. If you don't already have GA4 pulled up on your screen, you can pull it up if you want to kind of walk along on a, another monitor. Mm -hmm. I would also add if you're having any difficulty viewing, if you close the chat out, it'll expand your screen a little bit. So, but also note or tell us if you're having trouble viewing the stuff and maybe we can zoom in a little bit. Perfect. Cool. So the first, um, Page we're going to go to is our traffic acquisition report. Um, just a comment. So under the life cycle grouping of reports on the left hand side, and again, I'm starting in the reports tab here. It'll probably have you start in the home. Um, under life cycle acquisition, if you open that one up, it's under it's traffic acquisition, and it should look familiar. If it loads. There we go. So the few things that we want to show you um, on this report is just some nuances of GA4. So the first one 
as you can see right now, you have the default channel grouping on that left column. But if you click that drop down, you can sort by other areas if you'd like. So you can mm -hmm. sort by medium, campaign, source medium, any of those. Um, you'll see mm -hmm. that drop down on many reports in GA4. So if you're kind of wishing that like this is kind of the data I want, but a little bit different, try that drop down and you might find what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. Um, the other thing we are going to show is how to add a new column of data. Which is right next to it. So careful where you're clicking. <laughs> yes. Yes. So um, in GA4, you could add like a secondary dimension. So this is kind of um, similar to that where you can just add another column of whatever you want to see. The landing page, the traffic source, user numbers. You can search through any of this, so mm -hmm. you don't have to navigate. Yes. And then we can head to the landing page report. You'll notice, too, by default that this monetization report is in here. Again, that's e-commerce, so just know that that's there. <laughs> so this is under engagement. Now I'm still under the life cycle section, um, under engagement and then landing page. And again, this wasn't here <laughs> always, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was added. So my favorite thing to call out about the landing page report is the blank row number, uh, row number one. So um, Google, if you're listening, um, this blank row is your homepage traffic. Why it's blank, I don't know. Um, but you are able to tell that, Andrew, if you could add another column, that's the page mm -hmm. path and screen class. Um, so Google obviously strips out your domain, topfloortech.com. It'll strip that out, but it's also stripping out for whatever reason, the homepage. You can see the slash when we actually look at the full URL of that page. Um, and that's what it used to look like in universal analytics. I don't know why they had to change yeah. it for GA4. <laughs> yeah, I definitely want blank rows instead. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so one, um, one thing to keep in mind is there are like the landing page report specifically that blank row is the homepage. I've noticed blank rows in other reports and it does not always mean the same thing. And it's mm -hmm. a matter of Googling why is there a blank row in this report and you'll find it. Um, yep. I was doing some like PDF tracking and the same thing came up and it said, oh, the blank row is tracking all other file downloads that are not a PDF. So if it's an image download or something else, but it's this blank row. So you just kind of have to understand it, unfortunately, on a report to report basis. Um, but very important for everyone to know that that's the homepage. Um, and then I also wanted to show how to filter the data here. So at the top, you can add different filters if you want to see your organic traffic, paid traffic. Mm -hmm. So again, a lot more customization goes into GA4 to see the numbers you need, but it can be nice too. Don't forget to hit the question. apply button at the very bottom. <laughs> oh yeah, good point. Um, can you save filters so that like if it's a filter that you're using regularly, you can come back and it's still there or you oh. add it? You can create like I could duplicate this report or customize it. I mean, you can customize it, but I would recommend duplicating just in case you fudge it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then you can add filters that are by default. OK. Cool. So yeah, if I customize this report and I create a copy or save it as a copy, I can add a, a, mm -hmm. a filter to that and then that will default to that filter. Yeah. And, and then you could probably name. just name it like organic landing page report or something like that. Right. That's what I was wondering. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. I feel like that'll be a popular one for a lot of people. For sure. Yeah. The data that you're always going to, kind of a quicker way to see that. You can also do a lot of that customization in the explorations area if you're like i'm always going to look for this data you can do it there too yeah um if we want 
to talk a little bit about the Explorer tab. Um, mm -hmm. The so I feel like this is probably the coolest feature of the reporting. Yes, you can customize all the other reporting, and you can even customize your your navigation menu on that left hand side if you want to, um, which is really neat. You couldn't do that in Universal Analytics, um, but this explorations is pretty cool. So they have um, freeform, they have funnel exploration and path exploration. And you had access to some of this in Universal Analytics if you ever dabbled in that custom reporting tab. Um, but I feel like it's way more robust and kind of easier to use here. Every time I try to use it in Universal Analytics, I'm like, something's not working. I don't know. It's like glitching. Um, <laughs> mm -hmm. The really cool thing with the path exploration is you can go forwards or backwards from any type of event. So if you want to just see like, okay, where do people go from this page forward? Um, you can see that and like, where are they dropping off along the way? Or if you're like, I want to see people who, who are getting that to the RFQ and like what path they're taking, like what's the most common path that they're taking to get there? Because I'm going to make sure that like, I'm really, you know, uh, nurturing those visitors in a, in a good way to continue to get even more of them to that path. So you can put an end goal and it'll give you the path, the, you know, most likely path um, or whatever page to start on path. And I think that's Super pretty helpful. Cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, the, this does take a little bit of getting used to, to <laughs> figure out. Um, I'll just click into it so you can see what kind of the options are. Um, but it, yeah, it's pretty robust. So this one's a, for, for a funnel, actually. Um, so yeah, you have your segments, your dimensions. So this is where segments lives, by the way, and it's the only place where segments live. So you can set up a brand new segment up here um, and then save it, and then it'll save it forever, but you can only get to it in the Explore tab. You can't add it to the reports. Then you have your dimensions, your metrics, um, and then segment comparisons. And then you you put, like this one is, again, the funnel. So you wanna put in your, your steps to the funnel. And then if you wanna break down by anything, so like this one's broken down by device type. Um, mm -hmm. And then add filters, you can do all that in here. So a lot of options, which is really good, but it'll probably take you a little bit of yeah. um, doing to understand <laughs> the capabilities. It can definitely be overwhelming at first because there's so many For options. For sure, yeah. Um, and I think I wanted to touch a little bit on the admin tab because obviously that's going to be where all your setup stuff is. That in the library tab I want to go through too. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Sorry. Um, in the setup assistant is where it'll go through the steps, um, your setup steps. There is an option to import your conversions from Universal Analytics. Don't do that if you plan on setting up your conversions in Tag Manager. It will duplicate everything. Word of warning. Not that we have experience with that, but <laughs> ask us how we know. <laughs> uh, yeah, we just know. So, um, and then <laughs> this is where you can set up your events, your conversions, and your audiences. I know audiences was a question mm -hmm. that we had coming in before this. So, and then also your custom um, definitions for your dimensions and your metrics are in here. This is pretty much everything. Under the data settings is your channel groups. That's your that's your custom channel groupings. Um, I'm not going to go into all that. We just don't have the time in this session, but maybe in their next one. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, I wanted to touch on back to reports. Sorry to bounce around. Um, at the, we'll just wait for it to load. There's a, um, you can get to the live, what's called the library at the bottom here. And just know that, and this is where you can either customize your existing reports, start new ones and add them to your, uh, to your navigation here. Or there's also, um, kind of annoyingly, reports that are set up in here that are just not turned on. <laughs> Mm -hmm. So still if they're it's still something collecting, like, they're just not in the navigation. Yeah, exactly. They're still collecting. They're there. They're, they're just, you can't get to them except for to go in the library. And then if you publish them, it will add it to your navigation menu. Um, so one of those reports uh, is the actual search console report. So yeah, that's probably one of the things you're like, why don't they have a search console report in here? You know, like that, that was in universal mm -hmm. analytics. It's in here. 
Um, it's just not published. Yes, so, <laughs> so if it's something that you use in Universal Analytics, check out here, see if it's in there. Yeah, you, you have, have a... wait for it, but go ahead. We have a question. Um, mm -hmm. Is there a way to see returning user data in Universal Analytics? You could create a returning users segment to see things like page view, session duration, bounce rate, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And then the follow-up to that is the GA4 retention tab leaves a lot to be desired. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot about GA4 that leaves a lot to be desired, it seems, yeah. but yes. Yeah. Um, so I know that you can see, so on a lot of the reports, actually, it will automatically give you a dimension of new users versus returning users. So then you can see your uh, mm -hmm. sessions, events, conversions, what have you by that. Um, you can always create audiences and add those to any of the reporting. But again, if you, if you create the segment, you can only use that in the Explore. So yes, you can create the, se the segment, but make sure that you can get to the data that you're looking for in one of those exploration reports. I hope that helps. Got it. Yeah. Um, yeah, so see here how this search console says unpublished. Um, these little dots at the top. If I publish that, now I have the search console report. So just know that there's stuff out there that exists but isn't published. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you could really use this tab to customize what do you want to see or maybe like monetization. Mm -hmm. If your website is an e-commerce, you could probably... You don't need that in the navigation. You could put something else. Yeah, we else can. If you edit these collections, you can get rid of any of these, any of these folders or any report in here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. We are at ten forty eight right now. Is there are there any other reports you guys had in mind to show? Otherwise, I think we could open it up to questions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think Thank that's you. all. The reports, but yeah, if there's if there's a report you're hoping to see, you can comment that too. But yeah, any questions? In the meantime, I have some questions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so you had mentioned actually just a little bit ago with the setup, like transferring, I think it was conversions, conversions. or events from your conversions from Universal Analytics to GA4, mm -hmm. and then you had mentioned. Mm -hmm don't do that and set them up in Tag Manager. Right. What would you recommend doing? Like, would you recommend starting from scratch and setting it up through Tag Manager or transferring it over? I would always recommend Tag Manager. Um, it gives okay. you a way to test those conversions before publishing them and then you have clean data. So if you have to add one later, then you have a way to test it before you just like throw it in there and then hope it works. Yeah especially because um, I think Emily mentioned that it, it could be up to seven days where your data is delayed in GA4 due to those privacy things. It's trying to hide one in many. It's basically what it's doing. But um, if you threw a new event in here and you had no way to test it, um, it could be up to seven days before you see that come through. And if in seven days you have nothing come through, either the event never triggered because nobody did it or it didn't trigger because it wasn't set up correctly. So Tag Manager is probably your safest bet. And um, I know that a lot of people actually, if they have Universal Analytics, they do have events in there already. And you can use the same triggers for your new GA4 events. So if you know it already works in Universal Analytics, just use the same trigger for your mm -hmm. new tag, GA4 tag in your Tag Manager. That's super easy. Yeah. For you, it's super easy. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, sure. I, I know. I, I'm just thinking like for people who maybe have not used Tag Manager before, um, mm -hmm. I think GA4, it's kind of going to force you to have to learn yep. Tag Manager a little bit. Yeah. Or find someone curve. to help you. <laughs> yeah. Um, it can yeah. be tricky at first, but I think if you, like, especially if you have you could make it really easy on yourself and only do destination go goals, right? So if you have a mm -hmm. form, make sure it has a thank you page. Mm -hmm. That thank you page is your destination goal. And then that if you right. have that for every single uh, 
conversion event, then it's easy. It's really easy. You're basically doing the same thing for each one. Yeah. Cool. Um, I'll throw some more questions at you. What is an example of a custom channel group? You had mentioned that during the presentation. Mm-hmm. Um, seems like there's a lot to offer just from the default yeah. channel groups. Um, but are there any examples you can think of where creating a custom channel group might be important or necessary? Um, definitely if you're doing uh, campaigns and you want those to pull out separately in those channel groups, then make sure, like, especially if it's an ongoing campaign, like, yeah. you know, um, every quarter we do sure. this new ad rotation, but it's the same campaign um, and you want that right. pulled out into its own channel, then I would add a custom group, but um, in a more general sense, we have one client who does uh, advertising through AdRoll, if you know what that is, it's a a demand side provider for um, like display advertising. Um, For some reason, AdRoll does not come in as display, so it comes in as like referral traffic. Well, it's not technically referral, those are ads, so we want it to come in through display, we had to add that as a custom. Um, custom dimension or whatever uh, for that display grouping. Yeah, definitely more on the advertising side. I feel like it's yeah more necessary than you've got your organ- organic traffic email. All of that's already in there. Mm-hmm. So it's just pulling Social, out those yeah. specific yeah. segments. Yeah. Sure. Mm-hmm. Um, speaking of Google ads, can you, since I think you have the right screen up to maybe show where that is integrated? Oh yeah, um, at the bottom here, right here, Google Ads links. Okay. And it's just as simple as it'll ask you to log in to your Google Ads account and you're linked. And then that data is then flowing into um, your GA4. If you had it set up in Universal Analytics, you'll know that that reporting in Universal Analytics looked a lot like it did in Google Ads, which I think they did on purpose. But in here, there's a lot more robust reporting Um, especially under that advertising section, it'll actually show like, Mm -hmm. so the whole thing with GA4 is like cross-channel reporting, right? They want to see how many channels they touched before they converted on your site. This Mm -hmm. is going to do it for you a lot cleaner than Universal Analytics ever could. Um, And part of that is making sure that 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 your Google Ads account is linked in here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Yeah, I really like that. Go ahead, Anne. <laughs> oh, I was going to say, I we didn't really touch on this too much, but I think that's one of the coolest features of GA4 that mm-hmm. I'm most excited about yeah. is mm-hmm. to see the like cross-channel pathways. I felt like mm-hmm. that report in Universal Analytics was very confusing. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I'm excited to see what, what this looks like. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's um, kind of what I, I was going to say too, is it's nice to see, okay, we're investing our dollars in all these different platforms. And sure, one platform might not be at the forefront, your top converter, but if you mm-hmm. go and look, like it, there was attribution put toward that channel every time. It just wasn't the last conversion point. Yep. So it's yes. nice to kind of look at it. Yeah, yeah that's another good point. Yeah, you can attribute to actually yeah. is everything in Universal Analytics was truly based on like last click and you could change that to mm-hmm. linear or time decay if you know what any of that is. But basically, whatever channel they came from last before they converted was like the channel that got all the credit. GA4 is by default um, cross-channel data-driven attribution. So you could have half of a credit go to organic and half of a credit go to paid because they touched both channels before they converted. And mm-hmm. I think that's that's gives that's a more cool. holistic picture of like that that journey, right? So mm-hmm. I love it. Yeah. I like that too. I think, you know, channels like social media, for example, yeah. really like aren't looked at as very meaningful right. or, oh, or that's driving nothing for us. Any- yeah. 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 It kind of gives you a picture of like, okay, well, you know, maybe we got some awareness that way. Mm-hmm. And then right. a few months down the line, they came back in a more direct way. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, we have another question, a clarifying question going back to engagement rate. Um, it's if my engagement rate for direct traffic is 40%, for example, that means that 40% of users met one of the following 10 seconds, over 10 seconds on the page, 
one conversion event or at least two page views. Correct. So they meant one of those three things. Correct. Yes, yeah. correct. Cool. Um, looking at my other questions. Okay, I want to talk a little bit too in the last couple of minutes since I think we've dedicated most of this discussion kind of assuming you've probably created your GA4 account. Um, if you have not set your GA4 account up yet, mm-hmm. What are some, like, in a nutshell, I guess, steps that you should take right now to get that set up? <laughs> Maybe Emily Definitely should take go this, back to that. I will expand way too much. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll, we'll pass Andrea it to Andrea will give you too much to do. Um, I would say, first of all, go back to the um, taking your laundry list. Of what do you look at in Google Analytics? Um, mm-hmm. Looking at your conversions, your events, what segments and mm-hmm. audiences you're using, just truly take some time to figure out what do I want to know Yeah, on -hmm. a regular basis. Um, Of course, like set it up, right? So get GA4 set up and go through that process, but then take some time to then take that list to make sure your events are in there, your conversions are in there, everything you need, and then learn the platform. Just, okay, I'm always looking at users. Where do I find that in GA4? I'm always looking at organic traffic to this subset of pages. Maybe it's your, I don't know, your industry's pages on your website and learning how to find that data so that when mm-hmm. UA stops collecting, you're prepared and you're ready to go. Yeah. Um, so it's yeah. just a lot of like, do your best to get it set up as, as accurate as you can and then start to learn with some trial and error along the way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And know that it'll take time. And like mm-hmm. you said, trial and error. <laughs> So be patient. (laughs) I think that the taking inventory is such a key part of this. And I know that we covered it in the beginning, but um, it really is an opportunity to like start fresh. I mean, I see so many Google Analytics accounts that are just a total mess. (laughs) And, you know, why are you why are you tracking, you know, page views as a conversion? (laughs) Um, Mm -hmm. All kinds of things. So. (laughs) Yeah, this yeah. is a really a good time to just look at everything you're tracking as a conversion or event or your audiences and say, do I still need this? What am I keeping and mm-hmm. taking over to GA4 with me? And what can I just leave behind? I mean, the data is going to look so different anyway. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. you know, there's no apples and oranges, really. You might as well just start fresh with what you really want to track. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And that kind of goes back to like, if you want to export data from UA, Export what you absolutely need. You don't need files and files of all the data of everything that UA has to offer. Like, Mm -hmm. just export what you feel like you're really going to need and reference later on if you need it. Yeah, because also, I don't know if anybody thought of this when we said export data, but there are row and column limits. So, (laughs) to anything that you use in Excel or Google Sheets. So, you don't have a choice unless you want to look through 10 different files. <laughs> Make sure it's really what you need. <laughs> totally. Yeah. All right. Well, we are just at about 11 o'clock. So great job, you two. I always learn so much listening to you guys talk about this kind of stuff. So thank you. Um, to everyone who has joined us today, we will be following up with a recording. So if you want to share this with someone else or you want to revisit anything, you will have that. Um, obviously if you need additional help with setting up your GA4 account, uh, you know where to find us and we'd be happy to help you with that. Um, and then I think the last note is stay tuned for more from us because I think this is just the beginning of this journey and there'll be more reports. We can definitely dive into, you know, the exploration tabs, for example, Mm -hmm. in greater detail. Um, so if there's anything you want to hear from us, uh, let us know. So Mm -hmm. thank you all for joining and thank you, Emily and Andrea. Thank you. All right. Mm -hmm. Bye.